This is the third chapter in the video series on my pursuit of a new modern spec guitar. We narrowed it down to these three guitars. Now we've already seen the Schecter, we've already seen the PRS. So today, it comes down to this guy. Yes, I'm on the hunt for a new guitar and I've been testing out all of these three. Uh, this is the third episode and it comes down to the Ibanez RGD61 ALET. In layman's terms, that's an Ibanez RGD with an Evertune. Now, there's a playlist in the description if you've missed the videos on these other two guitars, but I check that so you can get all caught up. Now, while this video is not sponsored, I want to thank my good friends once again at Long McQuaid, that's Canada's largest musical instrument retailer with stores all across this great land and on the web at long-mcquaid.com. Uh, they've been super supportive of this channel and they let me raid their inventory so I can feature gear on this channel that will be of interest to you, but often it's of interest to me because I plan on buying one of these guitars. Now, Marco at the North Toronto location known as North York pared down this list based on certain specifications that I gave him, a budget of under 2K and a guitar that would be well suited for high gain tones, drop tunings and things like that, and really a stable instrument uh, for recording, and especially to pair with this Angle Powerball 2. Now, the main reason I made this video series is I wanted to focus on the process of buying guitar. It's not so much about the latest and greatest. I mean, Marco didn't hand me uh, a bunch of the newest guitars. All three of these guitars have been in production for a while, but they're still new because they still make them. But we can get swept up in the latest and greatest, but it doesn't mean it's gonna be the best instrument for you. But he felt that these were the best options for me, and I really appreciate that in a sales professional. So as I have with all of the guitars, I've used them for recording session. So let's jump in and listen to this guitar in action and then we'll come back and we'll check out the specs of the Ibanez RGD61 ALET. Did I get that right? Yeah, I think I did. sound a little funny to say but when I first got the idea of getting a more modern style guitar I thought it might be an opportunity to get back to my roots yes my roots because my second ever electric guitar was this one this is a 1986 RG 440 uh, Roadstar 2 now in my opinion when these came out Ibanez really stepped up their game because before this I wasn't really a fan of Ibanez at least in this style of guitar but these ones came out and they really took it up a notch we had this beautiful just an oil finished neck so my first experience to an exposed wood neck uh, we had the the edge you know Floyd Rose style tremolo system on here I did swap out the pickups at one point I put some Bill Lawrence OBLs but other than that it's pretty much stuck to what it was when I got it brand new in 1986 but in 1987 Ibanez introduced the RG series of guitars, which as you can say, the rest is history. And this RGD over here is definitely a direct descendant of this guitar. So uh, why don't we jump into the specs of this one and see what it has to offer. Here we have the Ibanez RGD61 ALET, which stands for RGD Shape, Axion Label Product Line, and Evertune. It starts with Godo locking tuners at the headstock, which is very fantastic tuning machines. Uh, matching colored headstock with this uh, gray matte finish. Ivan has his own like truss rod access. You can like open it with your pick. It's pretty cool. And the neck, we have a five piece walnut panga panga neck, which was really awesome with its open pore grainy finish. I'm a very much huge lover of Wenge, not just for its 
visual appeal, but it also just feels beautiful in the hand. These frets are actually Jumbo Sub-Zero treated frets, which uh, they're still nickel, but Ibanez kind of treats them in a specific way to kind of make them feel a little bit harder and a little longer lasting. Not quite stainless, but definitely should feel a lot harder and smoother than traditional nickel frets. It has lumen lay side dots and zigzag type fret inlay markers. So up here when you're playing like rhythm, you'll be able to see it a lot better. And down here when you're playing leads, it'll be more in your area where your fingers are gonna be. As you move down, it has that signature Ibanez all access neck joint that people, jeez Louise. <laughs> ah, the realities of shooting in a music store. We have this Ibanez all access neck joint that has become very popular on other RG models and thankfully is in the RGD body style. I do love these pronounced bevels here as well. Very much a very aggressive and modern looking instrument in that regard. We also have these two Fishman Modern pickups, which have been growing very much in popularity, and a three-way toggle switch, a voicing switch for each pickup, and a single coil mode. And then finally we have the Evertune, which is a very, very cool thing to have on a guitar because it just enables you to be able to grab the guitar by its strings and pull it like a maniac and it'll still be in tune at the end of the day. Very useful for rhythm playing and very useful for just uh, stability in general, especially if you're in the studio like you're going to be in Dan. Very invaluable for doing multi-track takes. You don't have to keep tuning in between each take. And I'm very curious to see what your experience is going to be with the Evertune system, considering it's like tailor-made for a studio uh, rhythm player. So this is not a new model, it's been around for a little while, but I still think this is a very solid choice for you, Dan, considering it is a very affordable option to have an Evertune, because most guitars equipped with an Evertune will kind of peak at just a bit over $2,000. And I believe for your budget that you had in mind, this fits the bill very well for what you're after. All right, Marco, I'm happy to discuss my thoughts on the Evertune. Now, the Evertune bridge is likely gonna be a big part of the reason whether or not I choose this guitar. Now, this is the most expensive of the three guitars, likely because of this Evertune bridge. But having an Evertune equipped guitar uh, is a very interesting option for me. Now, 
I work alone here. You know, there's no cameraman behind the camera here, the lighting, the sound. So often, you know, I'm doing guitar demos and I hate to admit it happens more often than I wish it did. I get to mix and the guitars are out of tune. I'm very sensitive to that when I'm focused on guitars, but apparently when I'm doing five things at once, I, I miss it. So knowing that I have a guitar that's got rock solid tuning is a very tantalizing proposition. Uh, the Evertune can be adjusted a, a lot of different ways. I didn't get to dive into it too much uh, for this video but you can set it so it compensates for anything out of tune. Like if you're playing a, a really weird chord and you're bending one of the strings, uh, it just won't accept bending, but you can actually adjust it to accept bending for leads. Uh, I believe you can do it from a string to string basis. There's a lot of ways you can configure it. That could be an interesting video. If that's something you guys are interested in, just let me know in the comment section. Uh, but uh, the Evertune, rock solid tuning stability, and also with these Goto locking tuners, just makes this a really good instrument for recording. And you know, if you're double tracking, it's always gonna be in tune, and that's really a big check mark in favor of this guitar. All right, so let's move over to the pickups. We've got the Fishman Fluence Moderns here, exact same pickups as the Schechter. But if you did see that video, You'll recall that I really like the pickups, but my only complaint about them on the Schecter was that I couldn't coil split them. Now, it's not a priority, but certainly it'd be nice to add some more variety. Now, you can coil split with these ones. So the assumption would be, well, same pickups, can't coil split here, but you can here. That'll make this one more versatile. Well, hold the presses. They giveth and they taketh away. Let me explain. Now, this is a single knob guitar, so there's no tone. So you've got a volume knob here. It's a push-pull. And to engage the, the different voicings on the pickups, you've got voicing one and two, some push-pull. So down, you've got voicing one, you pull it up for voicing two. It's a global setting. It adjusts both pickups at the same time. Whereas on the Schecter, I can adjust the voicings on each pickup separately. And then using the pickup selector, I can blend between them or switch between them. Here, it's on or off, it's one or two. Uh, that's all I can do, they're the same. And then yes, it has coil splitting, so I can get single coil tones, which I can't get on the Schecter, but it's also a global setting. The switch here and the down position puts both of the pickups into humbucking mode. And if you move it up, they're both in single coil mode. So for example, if I wanted to have, let's say humbucker in the bridge, single coil in the neck, which is something I could would often do for clean tones, Again, I can't do that, it's, they're, they're, they're global settings. So while I do have coil splitting here, which I don't have on the Schecter, I don't have the same ability to blend those modes as I do there. And this is what makes it so difficult sometimes. You know, The priority for me on this guitar is that humbucker in the bridge. That's the main thing that I need for this guitar, but it's the intangibles, the extra options and versatility that this, these guitars may or may not have. So I have to think about it. What's more important for me? Is it single coil tones or the ability to blend a little bit more? I'm gonna have to think about that. But anyways, Fishman Fluence Moderns, great pickups nonetheless. All right, let's move on to the neck because there's a lot to discuss with this neck. Beautiful chocolate brown finish, uh, open pore finish. You know, you can feel the wood grain. I love that in a guitar. Um, so it feels really nice. Now the neck is definitely bigger than the Schecter. You know, we've got the ultra thin here. It's comparable to the PRS. You know, this is a more glossy satin finish where like I said, you've got the, the, the wood finish here. But playability is really strong in this one. Very, very comfortable. Um, you have good access to the 24th fret. This is a bolt-on neck, but you get a nice contour on the heel here and the deep uh, cut here, so you can get right up to that 24th fret. So comfortable that way. But we do need to talk about the frets because you know stainless steel frets are a great option on a guitar, but this one doesn't have stainless steel frets. It's the Sub-Zero nickel frets as Marco described. They feel great. Now, do they have the same longevity as stainless steel frets? I can't answer that question, but it's definitely something in the back of my mind, since this is the most expensive guitar, is that something I'm gonna to have to contend with in the future? I'm not gonna labor on it too much, but it's a consideration considering this is priced higher uh, than the Schecter. Now, overall playability, like I said, is great. They feel good, but I do have to comment on the fret work because uh, I can actually feel those ends all the way up the neck on both sides. It's something I think I didn't touch on too much with the Schecter. The fret work is really, really nice. There was a couple of frets up high that were a little bit rough, but overall the fret work was really nice. But here I am feeling the ends, and I don't know if it's unique to this particular guitar or if it's just common with this product line, I'm not sure, uh, but I can only talk about this instrument. And I do feel those fret ends all the way up, but I can sometimes feel it while I'm playing. Again, that could be filed. That's something that can be dealt with, but it's something that I do need to mention. But overall, I love the playability on the neck, uh, but I do feel those fret ends and that's certainly gonna be consideration. But overall, I mean, it's a very well-built guitar. I love the belly cut here. 
Uh, the bevels on it are really nice. Very modern looking instrument. You know, definitely a heavy metal machine. Nothing paisley pink or yellow here. Uh, but these bevels, I said, are nice. And these uh, the horns on here, classic RGD look to it. Uh, beautiful guitar, well built. Uh, Evertune, definitely a plus for this guitar. You want to stay in tune when you're recording. So this is definitely uh, a big plus for this guitar. Fishman Fluence, do I want single coil options? Do I want more blending? I'm going to have to think about that. And this neck is great, but those frets, uh, something I got to think about. Well, that's it. The three guitars are in the books. All that's left for me to do is to decide uh, which one I'm going to buy. All right, Dan, if I was a betting man, I think the guitar you're going to choose is going to be the... You didn't think I was going to let you know in this video now, did you? Well, there is going to be a fourth and final chapter to this series in my pursuit of my new modern guitar. Uh, if you are not subscribed to this channel, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you get notified when the final video drops. If this is sometime in the future, there is a link in the description that'll link you to all of these guitars, plus the finale when I decide which one to buy. But I would love to know, what do you think? If you were faced with these three guitars, which one would you purchase? Which one do you think I should purchase? It may not be the same guitar. Let me know in the comment section. Would love to hear from you. Uh, but it's at this point, I want to thank my good friends at Long McQuaid once again for just being so helpful to this channel, providing me all kinds of awesome gear so I can showcase it for you guys. Uh, Long-McQuaid.com for all of your musical instrument needs and visit one of their many stores in Canada if you happen to be in this great country. Uh, a special mention and thank you to Marco, Mark, and Frank at the North York location. You guys rock. I really appreciate all the help and I look forward to seeing you guys very, very soon. Well, if you did like this video, like I said, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Uh, if you want to help this channel grow, there's a lot of ways you can do that. Check the description. I've got affiliate links. I'm on Patreon. I have merch. It all kicks back something to the studio here, helps me bring more content like this to you, and I really appreciate it. But the easiest way to help out this channel is to watch another video. And I've got one waiting for you right here. And remember, you don't need a band to rock and roll. And I look forward to seeing you again in another video.